welcome everybody. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments on the fancy version. We're going all the way back. What we do here is go back, 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 back. 2014. We're going back six years, ladies and gentlemen. This video is brought to you by my patron, Philip G. Also known as PG. So if you're a fan, you can watch this video. Well, <clears throat> Core 2014. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about in this video. Um, boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Oh, no. Might have to blur this out, everybody. This is the QQ L Zebra 7, North Carolina, near the South Dakota 41081. I grew up near that highway. Well, folks, hope everyone's having a great day. It's time to go back in time. Discuss the Lion 2013. Oh, my God. And really uh, remind everybody how far we've come. I think that's a really nice way to say it. It's a really nice way to look at it. So, <clears throat> we're going to crack some of these packs. Friendly reminder, yes, we have Mythics. Yes, we have Foils. Um, yeah, we do even have to check the Commons, because there's a 3 to $4 Common card. The the Apostle, I remember that. I even checked before the video to see if it was still worth that. Some <laughs> of the Staffs, Shield, all this cool equipment stuff. And yes, folks, it's not... Ooh, Bond. Very nice first rare of the old core 2014. Um, first things first. Yes, this was before they stretched the artwork further to the edge in 2015. Um, yes, there are Mythics. And yes, there's still a lot of tip cards back then. Sparks will fly. Celebrate 20... Oh my god, that's such a long time ago. The world was a different place, wasn't everybody? So obviously... up oh, there we go. So we're going to have to put this common card aside. This is literally a 3 to $4 common card. Can you imagine in 2020 if you could actually get a common card that's worth $3, $4? Like, it's just so uncomprehendable in 2020. And, of course, you have the different style artwork. The more the cards, don't even, they're not as, uh, how do we say it, computer-generated looking. Look at that nightmare. Great artwork, classic magic card. I know, not worth much. Foil Rare coming through early with the Ogre Battle Driver. Um, very nice, but not the most expensive, best foil we're looking for. Hey, look at that. Not even really too curled. Not for sure, being six, seven years old at this point, these things would be Pringles. So, anyways, uh, just to remind everybody, let's go through some history for you all. Um, this is a Bronze Era box. I'm going to have a video talking about what that means. Bubbling Cauldron, very cool and common. Vampire Warlord, love it. And uh, look at that blessing. Shivan, Shivon, Shivo. Shivan Dragon, everybody. Very iconic card, beautiful swampy, and a token. So as you can see, back in the day, back in my day, we still had Shivan Dragons as our rare. When I used to walk in the snow and talk about my Shivan and my Senga Vampire. I know, I know. Staff, Worm, Doom Blade. And look at this, everybody. The Dragon Valkus. Um, you know, believe it or not, a lot of these Mythics still hold pretty good value. Obviously, it's probably not the most expensive card in the set. Uh, I think there's still some Angels and Planeswalkers that still have some pretty good value in this product. You know, I guess the biggest takeaway is... Boy, has things changed. Goodness gracious. You know, I mean, just... Look at that. There's something you don't see every day. Even the old packs. Look at that. Duplicate comments, almost back-to-back. -back. Although... Beautiful art. What is that? Teresa or Rebecca? Ah, Rebecca, Rebecca. <laughs> All right, here we go, everybody. Blightcaster, Wall of Frost, another Doom Blade, and Dismiss into Dream for the old enchantments with those wolves running around in the sky. Yeah, um, Core 2014 wasn't really printed to oblivion to uh, the standards that we know today. <laughs> Shrivel, I remember that card. I used to think that artwork was scary as crap. Um, it really wasn't printed to oblivion as much, but it still had quite a bit of opportunity. That chick's eyes always freaked me out, man. All these sun artifacts. I'm sorry, the sun artifact, the staffs. And we got Guardian of the Angels. Look, at you know what that reminds me of? Never-ending story. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The big statues with the shoot the lasers from the eyes? This reminds me of. And a staff, foil uncommon. Very subtle foiling on that particular card. And that's it. You know, I don't. I think this box. These aren't even. I don't even think 2014 is one of the more expensive ones. I actually don't think it is. I think probably what 200 under 200. It's not really crazy. Wall of Swords. You gotta admit, the fact that they put floating swords and there's just nothing holding them up and there's just birds flying towards. It's pretty cool. Boy, look at the walls. Oh my goodness. Look at all the walls in this product. Look at the like. 
There are no walls. They're like walls are just not a thing. Really, that was our foil rare. Show some of you know, I really, I need to have some long-form video discussions with you all about the changes. Things have just evolved so much. Wild guess. That was a popular card, man. Yeah, here we go. Encroaching Wastes. We got uh, Rod of Ruin. There's an actual Alpha Beta reprint. New artwork and everything. Blessing again. And look at this. Prime Evil. Not Primeval. Prime, not, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Bounty. Beautiful piece of art there. Look at that Rainforest view, man. That's gorgeous. Who drew that? Uh, Christine, great work. Beautiful card. Again, a lot of these cards have some decent value, but there's really not... Like, I think the expected value of a box of 2014 is... Oh my god, look at that chick. Dude, that is creepy looking. I don't think... I still don't think the financial value of the single cards is super mega high. I think they're all probably around, what, maybe $50 to $100 a box. It's not even really that extreme at all. Phantom Wear. But I tell you what, the Magic cards, even from 2013-14, they have a different feel. They definitely do. Thorn Caster Sliver. Now remember, it's a sliver. It's always going to have some sort of demand because slivers are always going to be popular. Yeah, that's kind of where we are. You know, War of the Spark marked the end of that Bronze Era booster boxes, and now everything's changed this new super high-speed Flash era, which it is concerned. Look how many staffs we get. Look at all. We keep getting a lot of staffs in this video. Dragon in Awaken the Ancient. I actually remember this. Because I remember thinking Enchant Mountain. And this big dude just comes out of a mountain. Okay. I remember that. It was a kind of a, a weird little card. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I don't really have too much of a, I don't know, a shocking thing to say. But it's just, I guess it, it's just really, like, I wish you guys could go back and find out, like, and read about <laughs> Wild Ricochet. Anybody remember this? Look at that art. Look at that art. Uh, I wish you guys could find some of the old discussions. It may be online, it may not be, I don't know. I don't know how if everything's archived or what, but... Even when this set came out, everybody said, Worst core set, ruining magic, blah, blah, blah. Same old thing as always. And it's like, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Look at this Mind Sparker. That's a creepy looking card. Three drop elemental. Three two with the old First Striker Rue. And of course, whenever an opponent casts a white or blue, sparks for an extra two damage. Okay. Foil Swampy. Okay, look at, okay, with a regular Swampy. That's, all right. Yeah, remember, this was also before they raised the foil pull rate. So, there's not even a ton of foils. Like, you don't get a bazillion. Sorry, I wasn't looking for that Apostle. Have we got any more? I don't think we've even gotten any more. Yeah, we've, um, look at that sliver, man. Look at that thing. It's like a robot Terminator sliver. And Elite Arcanist. Um, Human Wizards, that's supposed to be like some sort of Jace or something. And uh, that's all we got. Yeah, you know, opening something like this, it's been a while. I wanted to really go back and kind of do something different with everybody. I know my patron, Philip, wanted to, was a fan of this era. And I was like, you know, it's really going to remind people how much things have changed. Because it's really weird because many things change so slowly and subtly, you don't realize how extreme the change is over a long period of time. Goblin Diplomat. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of GOAT. You know, it's just one of those things where, you know, now when you look back at a product like this, it just feels so old and looks so different compared to what we're used to seeing in 2020, you know? But at the time, it really didn't, everybody's like, oh, you know, hey, at least it's got a bunch of slivers in the set, but overall, kind of blah. And look at this. I mean, when's the last time we had a lot of slivers in a core set? A core set. I know, right? Time Ebb, very cool little fool. I love that artwork on that foil comic. I always thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, I think that's with the more you really start to looking at look at, and the more you kind of dig into the details, you realize how much things have changed. Because like I said, they don't feel like it because it's subtle. When things change slowly, you don't notice. Look at this indestructibility. Boy, that brings back memories. I remember looking at the art, going, "That is a crazy piece of art. Permanent, boop. Permanent's indestructible. Like, okay, that's." Interesting. Never really seen a card like that. That's that's interesting. Yeah, but I mean, that's... I don't know. I know everybody's all over the place right now with this 2020 with all these products and the variants. And there's a lot of... <laughs> and large. Look at that giant kitty cat. And Path of Bravery. I remember that one. Never a huge fan of that particular card. You know, I, I don't think people... You know... I don't know. I'm trying to... I'm a little lost for words there trying to... It's just kind of, it takes me back opening something like this. You know, I even did a little mass box opening. 
I think only like 90 or 120 boxes on this particular product. A long, long time ago, everybody. A Johnny's Chosen. Boy, a Johnny, that's a name you don't hear too much anymore. You'd think we would be hearing more about that, especially with all the dog and cat tribal stuff. You would think that would be more of a, I don't know, maybe a mainstream or popular name or card right now. You know, seems like it. But, you know, it's just... I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss for words in this video. It just really takes me back. Young Pyromancer. God, that was such a popular uncommon. Vial of Poison. I thought that was a beautiful. In foil, that purple looks amazing. Trading Post. You know, I want to talk about this card. Uh, so Trading Post was an interesting little card. When I first saw this one, I thought of... I love... I always have a little a weakness for artifacts. <clears throat> artifacts with all kinds of abilities. And different kind of things you can do. In other words, artifacts with choice. That was always one of my really big things. I always loved that. The problem is, obviously, in Magic, the more choices you kind of have on a card, historically, the more expensive the card costs to cast, making it not as attractive. Like, isn't it amazing? They still put iconic cards like Shiv and Dragon and Sarah Angel in this core set. Can congregate. Look how beautiful that is, you know? And Garouk's Horde for the Infamous. I think this was even an M12, M13. I think they reprinted that one a couple times. You know, it's just... It's interesting because now in 2020, it's like you open packs in like, what? I mean, there's so many flashy versions. Does anything hold a lot of financial value from a regular box? Pyromancer's Gauntlet. Look at that, everybody. <laughs> that's cool. I know it's not worth much, but that's cool. I think that's a really cool card. You know, and that's the thing. You know, I saw a lot of people sending me messages and talking online about how when everything becomes a special version when everything's special, nothing's special at all, you know? One of those type of uh, old mindsets and uh, kind of phrases. And, you know, I think it has a lot of truth. I really think there's truth to that. Another battle sliver. Savage Summoning. Um, I don't even remember that one. That's something different. Well, we're not... Uh, this isn't the best Core 14 box. We are... I mean, we got two Mythics, but really nothing... You know, I'm very surprised. Unless I'm missing the common card. Even then, we haven't been hitting all the Apostles that are 3 $4 a common. Embrace, Diabolic Tutor, very popular tutor on the Uncommon slot. And Grim Return, I remember that card. I remember seeing that art the first time, and I was like, holy smokes. Like, they would never do artwork like that in 2020. Ah, <laughs> Tomb Scour, this guy always cracks me up. Beautiful looking card in foil. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, that was just kind of my thing, you know. I just kind of, just kind of taking all this in right now. And it's just kind of, what a heck of a, God, a sliver construct. Anybody remember that? Vanilla Sliver, that's something you don't see too often. All right, Encroaching Waste again. We got the Molten Birth Sliver. Brave the Elements. Very cool. I don't remember seeing that one yet. Ah! Oh! There we go. Miss Liliana of the Dark Realms. Now, this was a Lili Liliana particular artwork that everybody always talked about. It said she always looked unhealthy, like overly skinny. She doesn't have, like, she doesn't, like, even the look in her hair, she doesn't look as healthy as the other versions. But again, maybe that's what they were going for. The Dark Realms, kind of that rougher look like that. But man... We did hit the Liliana. Oh, and we got a little worm. Liliana and some worms. Sometimes you got to go to the doctor. It is what it is. Uh, very, very cool there. We actually hit Miss Lily. All right. Planes. Remember back. <laughs> I know it may not seem like a big deal to you all. <clears throat> Getting a Planeswalker years ago was kind of a big deal. Like, that's not something that happened. Oh, my God. Now we're hitting the spice. Oh, do you guys want to talk about Mutavolt? The impact it had on everything, how big of a deal and how expensive this card. This was the most expensive card in Core 2014 for the longest time. Was this the first printing of it? I'm not sure. Mutavolt was such a big deal. <coughs> I can't even explain to you all. Oh, there's our Apostle. Three, four dollar common card. Man, Mutavolt and a Lily. Well, this this video just turned really quick. And Sarah, but yeah, and Dark Steel. Wow, holy crap! Maybe all the good cards were just clumped together. Am I right? Dark Steel Forge, Mythic number four, and a little Beast Advocate there. Very impressive. Okay, this box just really turned around. Mutable Lily, Dark Steel Forge. Okay, wow. So I was like sitting here, like, dude, where are all the good cards? Blightcaster. That was actually a pretty good uncommon. Artifice Helix. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Hex Congregate and Sarah of the Sword. Love the angel artwork. God. I think she's beautiful. Love the angel artwork. And of course, that's not the... Uh, what was it? The throne? What was that? The angel mythic in this set. I can't even remember. I haven't seen it in years. Um, let's see here. Alter's Reef. And by the way, that's a bad day. Alright. Here we go, folks. Armor. 
Flames of the Firebrand, another Dragon Egg, and there we go. This may be one of the few Hydras, I know, Nexa Jellyfish Hydra, Ravnica Hy Hydra dude. This is one of the few that's actually still worth some good money. So we just went from a weak box opening to five Mythics, Mutavolts, a flippin' wow. So this video just did a whole 180. I guess that's how quick things shift, and you gotta be real careful saying the box is good or bad at the beginning, man. Geyser, Air Servant, Diabolic Tutor, and another Vastwood Hydra. There's a lot of cards in the set that are still worth between that two and like four dollar range. There's a ton of rares. And Bleo, oh, Apostle right on the top. There we go. Third Apostle. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, we're getting some value now. Boy, it started off kind of slow, but man, anybody who stuck around, there's a lot of value popping out now. Fire Shrieker, Young Pyro. You know, that used to be like a two, three dollar uncommon too. Tide Binder Mage. I don't think Tide Binder, although the blue chick's pretty cute. I don't remember uh, I don't remember that card ever having a good financial value or anything major. I could be wrong. It's been a long time, everybody. It's been a long time. All right. Here we go. Corrupt. Look at that. That's creepy, man. Another staff over here. And Singer Vampire. Oh, God. That artwork. I'm sorry. That artwork just doesn't... I... I mean... <laughs> that artwork. Haunted Plate Mail. I remember this stuff. Good old Izzy artwork, am I right? All right, folks, we're down to the last couple packs here. Well, Philip, turned out to be a really solid box. All the cards are going to be heading your way, and I tell you what, what a solid box. Ooh, Angelic Accord, beautiful piece of art on that angel. Another staff, and look at this, that creepy Rudy. That's what I'm going to look like when I'm older. Look at that witch, and a Fortify, foil common. Well, folks... Last four packs. We're wrapping it up for the day, everybody. Absolutely great change of pace, blast from the past. I think we all needed this in an era. You know, it was funny when a magic set came out back then, how big of a deal it was. Look at this dark steel ingot? Ingot? I don't know how to pronounce that. Another worm. Elixir of Immortality. Love the art. And the Phoenix from Mrs. C. Eh, I don't think that one's really much of anything. I couldn't I don't remember that one being worth a lot. <clears throat> all right. Anything hiding here? Here we go, folks. Bubbling Cauldron, Water Servant, another Rudy after he sticks his finger in a light socket, and a Traumatize. Just kidding, Traumatize. And a Foil Minotaur. Ah, you know, I don't... I just don't think we're ever going to return to a more normal magic era of this stuff. And it's a little, it's a little sad. It's a little depressing, everybody. You know, Singar, beautiful Angelic, and the old Necromancer. You know, Necromancer, every, even to today, when I still see those cards, I still think of Diablo, the Necromancer class, and what, Diablo 2, I think, was my favorite. You know, isn't that crazy? All right, everybody, into the close. We got the old Nahing Zombie, Air Servant, and a nice Sliver Demon in the close. Hey, a second foil rare. Holy crap, that is a really big deal back then. Oath of the Ancient Wood. Wow. Like, don't do you guys realize how hard it was to get foil rares? Well, like I said, we don't really do a lot of core 2014 box openings. I'll talk for a few seconds here, but appreciate the support, everybody. Glad you enjoyed. Boy, what a cool video there. A lot of good pulls, Philip. Um, overall, you know, this video is being filmed at the end of August 2020. You guys will probably see it a week or two later. Yeah, Magic's really changed a lot, and it is concerning, but the game is healthy. It's becoming very expensive, which is concerning. Um, Wizards is definitely going after a lot more money and margins and milking, and they are hitting the secondary market for all this new stuff. It's concerning. I think we all agree with that. None of us like the idea of the rising prices, but as of right now, <clears throat> the market is absorbing it, and it's handling it okay. But it does, it does concern everybody that eventually, what if the market shifts and Wizards doesn't throttle back? You know what I'm saying? What if, what if we hit something like that? So, that's all I have to say. I don't know what the future holds. It is a little scary. But I hope you guys stick around and we can ride it together. Giggity.